What shape floats in the dark window? What ragged form? Mouth, scream, edges barbed, it balances on a long, spiked, crooked stem. I know now as if I'd never known this black shape within the night's black shape. Dead daisies, shriveled lilies, withered bodies of dry chrysanthemums. Among these and waste leaves of yellow and brown fronds of palm and fern, I came and found a rose left for dead, heaped with the hopeless dead, its petals still supple. Of my brothers, one would have ignored it, another ravished it, the third would have pinned it to his chest and swaggered home. My sister would rival its beauty, my mother bow before it, then bear it to my father's grave, where he would grant it seven days, then return and claim it forever. I took it, put it in water, and set it on my windowsill. In the procession of summers and the arrivals of days, the roses marched by in a blur, the roses burning in the coffin between my father's stiff hands, the rose I mistook for blood on my sister's breast, a red rose I thought was a mouth, it was mute, a white rose I swore was my soul, it choked. Black Chinese roses my grandmother describes to anyone who'll listen. The ones that taste like grapes when she ate them as a girl. Terrible rose my brother inherited. Worm-eaten rose of his brain. Rose of ruin in his poor life. And it was roses that broke the back of the book of martyrs. And roses my mother would touch and heal. But roses which went on dying. Always a rose, in prayer and in fever, in the sun and in the den. Always that doomed, profane flower, that vertical flame darkens my arrivals, announces my departures and sweetens my dying. Always the blackening, the bruising, the late fragrance, the opening to fullness and toward death. Always a rose ready to spill its petals so that I must pluck each of them, or crush the whole thing in my fist, or I must cup it in my hands, adore it in silence, or more often in words. When with arrows night pierces you, Rose, I see most clearly your true nature. Small, auroral, your death is large. You live, you die with me, in spite of me, like my sleeping wife. Lying here with her at my right and you at my left, the dying lies between the dying. Bend closer, let me translate my nights and days. Each finger is a brother or sister, and each thumb is smudged the deaths I'm losing count of. The left palm is the forsythia that never waved goodbye. The right is my beloved pine dying from something no one knew. My arms and legs are the rain and its opulence. My face, my mother's face. My hair is also hers. She inherited it from the horses who recovered it from the night. Here is what is left, a little brown, bits of black, a few specks of light. Here are my shoulders and their winglessness my spine, the arc of love. And here on my belly is a stripe of skin, hairless in the color of old blood. Beginning at the navel, it descends into the tangled hairs. Vestige, omen, this is the stain which at my birth my father traced with his finger while pronouncing in dread that I was born half girl. So I was given the remedy of the rose made to eat you whole, swallow your medicinal taste. Before the honey, before the salty crystal, I knew your bitterness, a fresh shovel of dirt, a bitterness rich with grief, a black flavor far back in the throat, one part soil, two parts root, and all the filaments of rain. 
question and answer in one bud unfolding. You are what the spade tastes with its sharp tongue, what the earth utters in serious savors more generous than salt, more memorable than sweetness, something with a shadow the weight of a man fallen asleep during incessant prayer, a good, grave, exquisite bitterness. Odorous and tender flower body, I eat you to recall my first misfortune. Little bitter body, I eat you to understand my grave father. Excellent body of layers tightly wound around nothing, I eat you to put my faith in grief. Singed at the edges, dying from the flame you live by, I eat you to sink into my own body, secret body of deep liqueur. I eat you down to your secret. Listen now to something human. I know moments measured by a kiss or a tear, a pass of the hand along a loved one's face. I know lips that love me, that return my kisses by leaving on my cheek their salt. And there is one I love who hid her heart behind a stone. Let there be a rose for her who was poor, who lived through ten bad years and then ten more, who took a lifetime to drain her bitter cup. And there is one I love, smallest among us. Let there be a rose for him who was driven from the foreign schoolyards by fists and yelling, who trembled in anger in each retelling, who played alone all the days, though the afternoon trees were full of children. And there is one I love who limps over this planet, dragging her steel hip, always a rose for her, and always a rose for one I love, lost in another country, from whom I get year-old letters, and always a rose for one I love, exiled from one republic and daily defeated in another, who was shunned by brothers and stunned by God, who couldn't sleep because of voices, who raised his voice, then his hand against his children, against his children going. For him a rose, my lover of roses and of God, who taught me to love the rose and fed me roses, under whose windows I planted roses, for whose tables I harvested roses, who put his hand on my crown and purified me in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, who said, Get out! You're no longer my son! Who never said, Forgive me, why do I die? Hold me, hold me. My father, the godly, he was the chosen. My father almighty, full of good fear. My father exhausted, my beloved. My father among the roses and thorns. My father rose, my father thorn. Not for the golden pears, rotten on the ground, their sweetness, their secret. Not for the scent of the dying did I come back to my father's house. Not for the grass grown wild as his beard in his last months, nor for the hard little apples that littered the yard, and vines rampant on the porch, tying the door shut, did I stand there, late, rain arriving, the rain came, and where there is rain, there is time and memory and sometimes sweetness. Where there is a son, there is a father, and if there is love there, there is no forgetting but regret rending two shaggy hearts. I said goodbye to the Forsythia, flowerless for years. I turned from the hive-laden pine. Then I saw it, you, actually, past the choke rhododendrons, behind the perishing gladiolas, 
There in the far corner of the yard, you, my rose, lovely for nothing, lonely for no one, stunning the afternoon with your single flower ablaze. I left that place. I let the rain meditate on the brilliance of one blossom quivering in the beginning downpour. Why do you stay away from me? At what far edge do you linger, trembler, that you can't hear me call? What is this liturgy, this invocation, and to whom? What are you to me? I tear you with my teeth. Speak, speaking flower. Open me, thorn flower. Let me hear the grumbling of my fathers and uncles, blood drop of my dead brother. Still you say nothing, so keep secret, secret. But return to me, ever returning, and come inside, visitor, old rose, older than the remedy of the rose, keeper of the back door, born of sleep and igneous kiss, fed by what dies, rots, putrefies, blood, pork fat and bone, fish head, shavings, peelings, curdled milk, wet molds and stinks, this and the last and the last year's leaves, mown grass, rotten apples, dead roses. What I will not eat, but heap on you and fall, each fall, that you may flourish, ashen herald, that I may eat you, old bitter rose. If with my mouth, if with my clumsy tongue, my teeth, if with my voice, my voice of little girl, of man, of blood, and if with blood, if with marrow, if with groin, lungs, if with breath bristling with animal and vegetable, if with all the beast in me, all the beauty, I form one word, then another, one word for every moment which passes, and if I do so until all words are spoken, then begin again. If I adore you, Rose, with adoration become nonsense, become praise, could I stop our dying? Could we sit together in new bodies, shoulder to tender shoulder, the lovely and the thorned, the bitter and the failed, the grave to the left of us, the sea to the right? Could you rise and stand and bear the weight of all the names I would give you? Cup of blood, old wrath, heart of mine, ancient of days, whirl, world, word, O oh day, come. You sag, turn your face from me, body made of other bodies, each doomed. Remember, it was I who bled for you, I, born hungry among the hungry, third in the last generation of the old country, of the family plum, a brood distinguished by madness, tales of chains and wailing. It was I who saw you withered and discarded, I who taught my father patience and doled the blade of his anger, who eat you now before morning when you must climb your ladder of thorns and grow to death. I, middle stone in the row of stones on my mother's ring, I, the flawed stone, saw you dying and revived you. I saw you dying and called you mine. I named you each day you remained. Scorn, banish, grieve, forgive, love. My meditation, my recitative, I love you best this way. An old, brittle trumpet, a shred of my mother's dress, no longer regal. I love your nakedness, naked, shy flower, 
sweet to my nose and bitter to my tongue among the dying things are you and I.